Hi everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. I'm really excited for today's video because this is a new brand to me, so a new brand to the channel. Wendy got these from her mom who got them from a friend. So these are white mountain puzzles. I believe it's a US brand. I'm not familiar with them at all. I've seen other people post online their images. The quality looks good, so I'm expecting some high quality jigsaw puzzles here. This one's called Movie Posters and the artwork is by Lewis T. Johnson. And this one's called Coffee Cafe by Charlie Girard. So I love them already just because they're such busy images. I'll find things to talk about. So how about I change my camera setup? We'll pop open these boxes and we'll have a look inside. So let's open these two boxes and just have a look at the pieces. Now, I'm hoping not to get too much glare. You can see from my overhead light. So let's spread those apart a bit. I have no idea what the finish is on these puzzles. Hopefully not too shiny so that during the time lapse it doesn't look too oh goodness tight fitting box how much fun is this like this is the type of image i love just busy so let's see there's a little insert here um won't apply to me because i don't live in the u.s but they basically talk about some of their puzzles and the company you can do personalized puzzles and look at these oh wow so First of all, they look really big. And I do think they say something about how their pieces are larger than maybe the standard size piece. And lots of fun cuts. It looks like, you know, even though this is a four prong piece, it's not like the standard shape of a four prong piece. Love that. This looks like it's going to be lots of fun and these pieces are nice and big and I will enjoy that. I do enjoy a larger size puzzle piece. Pretty good thickness, not super thick, but not flimsy by any means. Hopefully they'll go together nicely. I have a feeling because of the cut, false fits will be at a minimal. Hopefully. I have no experience with White Mountain Puzzles. Interesting how this one's just White Mountain and that one says White Mountain Puzzles. I wonder if they've branded differently between these two puzzles. For example, this one has a QR code right there. This one has an insert but without a QR code. It does have Facebook so I just wonder if this puzzle is newer than this one and maybe did they decide to go from White Mountain to White Mountain Puzzles? Good question. Oh, this comes with a, a box holder, so you fold that and then you can, you know, hold up your box. We've seen those before. And again, the puzzle piece is nice and big. Same thickness. I believe between the two puzzles, I don't see a difference. Lots of, I better not mix them up. Lots of, lots of piece cut shapes. Some of this is already connected, but I'll pull them apart. Like it feels like they're going to have a nice fit though. I think I'm going to love putting these jigsaw puzzles together. The only thing is this one's portrait typically doesn't record as nicely. I find as this one that's landscape mode. So, oops, sorry, <laughs> a box fart. <laughs> so I will do the coffee cafe one first and then I'll do the movie poster one. And I thought for the coffee one, I wanted to talk a bit about Tim Horton. Not just Tim Horton's The Coffee, but Tim Horton The Man. And I thought that would be very interesting because Tim Horton is Canadian. As for the movie posters, I thought it might be interesting to talk about one of the movies that is lesser well known, like perhaps Footlight Serenade, never heard of that. But I'll do some research on the brand because I'm not familiar with them and I'll see what information they have online and I do wonder if they change their name or if, if that's, yeah, because even on the document here, White Mountain, White Mountain Puzzles, I wonder if it's a new logo and they added puzzles to their name. Just something that I'll try to find out and look up for you all. So we'll talk about the brand a bit more. We'll assemble both of these puzzles lovely collage, busy puzzles. I'm going to enjoy this. Talk about Tim Hortons and maybe about some lesser well-known movies from the dates. What is this? This is like 1930s to 1960s maybe. Interesting to find out. So for the love of puzzles, let's do our first White Mountain Jigsaws. In 1978, 
Two entrepreneurs in New Hampshire of the United States started a small poster company that evolved into White Mountain Puzzles. The company is still a family-owned business with founders Cronin Minton and Ted Robluski, sorry if I mispronounced that, still involved, but they've turned over the day-to-day -day operations and ownership to their respective sons, Sean and Colin. The company is still located in Jackson, New Hampshire, with a population of 850 people, and that's in the White Mountain National Forest, just a few minutes from Mount Washington. I couldn't actually find when they changed their White Mountain Puzzle logo, but there definitely is a difference between my older and newer puzzles. Now, besides the logo difference, there's actually differences in the two puzzles that I have. The older movie poster puzzle held together much better and could be picked up, but it still produced so much puzzle dust, like a significant amount of puzzle dust actually. The backing was more gray in color as well. The newer coffee cafe puzzle would not really pass the pickup test, but it did not have a single speck of puzzle dust. The backing on those pieces was more purple in color. All the pieces though fit together quite nicely, but the older ones felt like they were more snugly fitting. Perhaps the pieces on the older ones were maybe slightly thicker, but it wasn't obviously noticeable. The pieces definitely did have a different feel to them. Who is Tim Horton and what is his connection to the coffee chain? Well, Miles Gilbert, Tim Horton, and the Tim is actually in quotes, so I don't think that was one of his legal names, but perhaps just a name he chose to go by, was a Canadian professional ice hockey player. He played defense for like 24 seasons in the National Hockey League, the NHL. He played for such teams as the Toronto Maple Leafs, New York Rangers, Pittsburgh Penguins, and Buffalo Sabres. In 2017, Horton was named one of the 100 greatest NHL players in history. He was also a successful businessman as he co-founded the Tim Hortons restaurant chain with Jim Sharad. Now the first Tim Horton restaurant was located in North Bay, Ontario, and it actually sold hamburgers. The chain's first donut store opened on May 17, 1964 in Hamilton, Ontario, under the name Tim Horton Donuts. The name was later abbreviated to Tim Hortons with an apostrophe S, and then eventually changed to Tim Hortons without the possessive apostrophe. In 1967, Horton partnered with investor Ron Joyce, who assumed control over operations after Horton died unexpectedly in a single vehicle crash in 1974 at the young age of just 44. Now, upon Horton's death, Joyce bought out the Horton family share for $1 million and took over as sole owner of the existing chain of 40 stores. Now, Ron Joyce quickly and aggressively expanded the chain in both geography and product selection, with the 500th store opening in 1991. Joyce expanded the chain into a multi-billion dollar franchise. Charade, he left the organization in 1966, but then briefly returned in 1970, and then again in 1993 through to 1996. The restaurants are commonly nicknamed Tim's or Timmy's. I prefer Timmy's. And overall, they are based in Toronto. It's Canada's largest quick service restaurant chain with now 5,352 restaurants in 15 different countries as of June 30th, 2022. So have you ever been to a Timmy's? And do you know what a double-double is? Are you a double-double, single-double, double-single, or a triple-triple? Now, I grew up in a small French village whose population recorded in the 2021 census was 1,692. Yes, it's on the main highway through New Brunswick and there are many surrounding areas, but still, you get the picture that it's small on population. They have a Timmy's. It's open every day from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. with the drive through going until 10 p.m. And I haven't been inside many times, but every time that I've been there, it's been full, packed with customers, and I've seen the drive through snaking around even onto that main highway road. 
All these movie posters had such a similar style and feel to them. And even the look of the actors, like their hairstyles and everything, their clothing was very much alike. Many of the actors did appear on more than one poster. Footlight Serenade is a 1942 musical comedy film directed by Gregory Ratoff, and it starred Betty Grable, John Payne, and Victor Mature. Here's the plot of the movie, which I grabbed from Wikipedia. Tommy Lundy is an arrogant champion boxer who is hired by Broadway promoter Bruce McKay to star in a stage act, which will include singing, dancing, a comedian called Slap, and a boxing exhibition. Tommy makes sure his girlfriend, singer Estelle Evans, gets the female lead in the role. But he falls in love with dancer Pat Lambert, who becomes Estelle's understudy. Now, Pat, she's actually engaged to Bill Smith, who also ends up with a small part in the show. They get married, but keep it a secret because they don't want to irk Tommy and cause him to quit the show. Estelle, while well, she becomes jealous of Tommy's affection for Pat, so she tips him off that she saw Pat and Bill sneaking into a hotel the night before. The night before the show opens, I believe. During the boxing portion of the stage act, Tommy begins punching Bill for real, though. In between blows, Bill explains that he and Pat, well, they actually got married and they're now husband and wife. So Tommy accepts this graciously. Then he and Bill both take turns smacking slap instead. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Here's a bit of trivia for you to use at your next pub quiz night. So there's a scene where... Um, Miss Grable, who plays Pat, she's rehearsing her dance routine over and over again because she's the understudy just in the event that she gets called up to fill in for the leading lady. Well, her friend, whose character name in the show is Flo, utters the line, I'll try to do this in the style of a 1940. You have as much chance of going on as I have of becoming first lady. I don't know if that was good. It almost sounded like it had a little southern twang to it. I'll repeat that. So her friend Flo says to her, you have as much chance of going on as I have of becoming first lady. Well, Flo was actually being played by Jane Wyman, who at the time was married to Ronald Reagan, who did eventually become president of the United States. But when he was president, he was actually remarried to Nancy Reagan. However, Jane, you really did get close to becoming potentially the first lady of the United States. These jigsaw puzzles were just so much fun. I loved every single minute of it. I loved every piece. I really enjoy such a busy image. I think it's the first time I've done this style of collage, I believe. I don't have any recent memory of doing any, and I loved it. And even though I wasn't speed puzzling them, I was just doing them, it took me like three hours, 29 minutes, three hours, 30 minutes, nearly identical in time. And they're now like my third and fourth fastest time for a thousand piece jigsaw puzzle without even trying to speed puzzle them. Oh, I just loved it. I took a piece, tried to figure out where it went, put it on the table, and very few pieces that I couldn't figure out right away, I put to the side and would eventually revisit them. I did do the border first on the movie poster one, just to make sure I had a good footprint for my camera, because they are slightly larger than a standard 1000 piece jigsaw puzzle that we're kind of more familiar with. But I enjoyed that because I like working with larger pieces. And the pieces are so much fun and the cuts, just really enjoyed them, wonderful quality. I just want to know, how would you approach these jigsaw puzzles? Because I did not sort, I just, I just built. <laughs> like, yeah, I just grabbed a piece and put it down, grabbed a piece, put it down, and eventually it all came together. I guess you could sort this one by like yellows and reds, maybe the blues and greens, or pieces with wording and without wording, but how would you approach this style of jigsaw puzzle? Do you enjoy this style of jigsaw puzzle? This to me is, is heaven. This is what I love. And of course, I had my Tim Hortons mug with me while I was building it. Oh, yeah, it, it was just such a joy. And I have to thank Wendy and Wendy's mom for getting me these puzzles. Wendy is wonderful. She's like, hmm, 
No, not that puzzle. Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll take that puzzle. She's like my puzzle bouncer. <laughs> which ones make the cut and which ones don't? Oh, but just so much fun. And I hope to do more white mountain puzzles if I can find them because they are hard to get here in New Zealand. But I'm, I was so lucky and I really appreciate it. And thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you being here too. For the love of puzzles, I hope you enjoy my videos. Please consider subscribing and until next time, ciao!